In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Revapoint POP 3D Scanner. The POP is a structured light 3D scanner that's designed to be easy to use and simplify the process of making a 3D model. In this video, we're going to test out the POP in a few different applications, including face scanning, scanning color models, and scanning models that have a lot of surface detail. This video is going to be a little bit longer than most, so I've split it up into a few different chapters, so you can skip straight to the scanning if you're not interested in seeing the unboxing, or you can skip straight to the color texture if you're most interested in that. The POP started off as a Kickstarter campaign that originally aimed to bring structured light 3D scanning to the hobbyist price range. It was fully funded, and Revapoint has since gone on to sell the POP on their site. The POP is a structured light 3D scanner, meaning it projects a grid of light onto an object and then uses two sensors to measure the distortions in that grid to determine the geometry of the shape. This is a different process than I normally use. I typically use photogrammetry for scanning objects, which involves taking a picture of an object from multiple different angles and then stitching all those photos together in a 3D program like Metashape to create a 3D model that has both a mesh and a texture. Because these pictures are taken with a high resolution DSLR camera, I get a high quality texture as well as a high quality mesh. The POP is a little bit different. It uses an infrared projector, two sensors, and an RGB camera to capture both the geometry and the texture of a model. This can either be accomplished with the model on a turntable or by holding the POP as a handheld scanner and slowly moving around an object until you've captured the entire thing. Before we dive into the software or how to use the scanner, let's go ahead and pop the box open and see what's included. Revapoint ships the POP scanner in a pretty sturdy box that also includes a foam cutout, which you could probably use if you wanted to 3D print a case. The included tripod has a rubberized grip on the legs, so you can use this almost like a handheld monopod, and it feels pretty substantial. When I had this on my desk, I felt pretty confident that it wasn't going to fall or anything like that. There are two USB cables included, one USB-C and then one USB-A. The scanner itself is about the size of a Snickers bar, and at 200 grams, it's pretty substantial, so it feels solid without necessarily being too heavy or fatiguing to hold while using. The included automatic turntable ships with calibration dots already installed on it, which is a nice touch, but I wish it was a variable speed. It rotates about two and a half times a minute, which doesn't seem that fast, but sometimes when the scanner gets misaligned, it can be really hard to get back on track. The POP ships with an included test model, which is just a great touch because it, it's a really fun thing to scan. There's also a large black sheet which can be used as a backing mat if you've got a really busy looking desk, just to give it a nice solid black background. There's also this blue sticky material, like a stickum stuff, and you can use this to put on the turntable to stick small objects to. There's also a few sheets of these calibration targets, we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail later. And finally, there's a black latex glove which you can use for holding objects and the camera won't detect it. The software used by the POP is called HandyScan, and it's a pretty powerful program, but it does take a little bit of practice to get the hang of it. Right off the bat, the first thing you'll notice is you're actually looking at three separate camera views here. You're looking at the model being captured, the infrared camera, and the RGB camera. So the first thing we can look at is the RGB camera. You can adjust the exposure here for a lighter or darker image. Generally speaking though, while you're scanning, you're going to want to ignore this camera once you've had it set because it doesn't really have a bearing on what you're scanning. This is probably the most important panel to pay attention to. This shows you what the infrared scanners are seeing, and there's a couple of small tweaks you can do here to get some really great results. Right off the bat, one of the most impactful changes you can make is adjusting the gain of the scanner. So this changes the sensitivity of the camera. Adjusting the gain higher is going to pick up more light, but it looks a little bit more washed out. You can also increase the intensity of the projector using this slider to the left. Depending on your lighting, this can take a little bit of practice to get dialed in, and ideally what you're looking for is a model that doesn't look washed out, but has full coverage from that infrared projector. The middle panel can also indicate if the scanner is too close or too far from the object. Ideally, you'll stay in the excellent range, and the entire screen will remain untinted. If you start to move too far away, it tints yellow and red, and it does the same for too near. Once the brightness has been adjusted, the gain has been adjusted, and the model is positioned, you're ready for your first scan. The test model that Revapoint included with the POP is ideal for your first ever 3D scan. It doesn't have a reflective surface, and it doesn't have a lot of super sharp detail, so it's pretty easy to capture, especially if it's placed on the turntable. It fits entirely within the bounding box of the scanner, so you can see we got everything except the top of the head by rotating it around on the turntable, and after getting complete coverage, I just manually lifted up the pop so I could scan the top of the head. 
It takes a little bit of practice to get this process down. You have to hold the scanner very steady as the model's turning on the turntable to fill in the back of the head while keeping the entire model in view. Once the scan is complete, Revelpoint will show you what the point cloud data looks like. So these are all the points of the model. This isn't necessarily what the mesh is going to look like. So it can look a little bit sloppy, and you'll see here one of the ears is missing a little bit of information. Under the nose looks a little bit sloppy too, and that's okay. From here, what we're going to do is build the mesh, and once the mesh is built, the model looks 10 times better. We can see we've got all that data for the ear, the nose, the base of the model, everything looks really sharp, and so this is a pretty good first scan. The mesh looks really clean, there's not a lot of noise or areas where there was missing geometry. Everything looks like it worked pretty well, so I'm happy with this mesh, but if we're going to 3D print it, we need to make it a watertight solid. RevoPoint includes Handy Studio, and it's basically a mesh editing suite that allows you to do things like make plane cuts and fill in objects. It's a little clunky, and generally speaking, I wasn't thrilled with the way that it closed holes. They just looked kind of noisy to me. So if you already use Mesh Mixer, I'd probably recommend sticking with that instead. Once I converted the surface into a watertight solid, I brought it into Prusa Slicer, and it looked pretty good. It looks printable, and generally speaking, I think it looks pretty accurate to the original. So after printing it out, you can see the level of detail on the original and then the scan. Some things like underneath the eyes, there's a little bit of detail missing, but generally speaking, I'd call this a success. In my opinion, one of the real key features of the scanner is the ability to scan a model, pause the scan, reposition the model, and then resume the scan. This is how you can capture a full model, which is historically a really difficult thing to do. Flipping a model over on its side or on its back, you get all kinds of tracking errors, and what the Revopoint Pop software does is it lets you scan the model, pause the scan, reposition it, and then resume. The only downside here is sometimes it doesn't lock the model together, and you get these initial mistrack errors, and then it snaps into place. What would really make this powerful is the ability to pause the print and then manually rotate the scanned model so you can reposition it before resuming the scan. It would prevent a lot of these mistrack errors that happen right when you resume. These tracking issues aren't the end of the world, and you can see here while I'm scanning this PS4 controller, I'm able to pause the scan and completely flip the controller over click resume and we actually still get full coverage so the model doesn't really have any missed spots there's just that initial miss track and you know if, if you've got a lot of time sunk into a scan that's not what you want to see a really cool feature that could be added in future versions of the software would be the ability to pause the scan rotate the model and then sync the model up with the scan before hitting resume. That would just be a very fast way to ensure models don't have any of these tracking issues and still you can get complete coverage on the model. So let's talk about the color texture for a minute. This scan of a PS4 controller was done using four views total, so a high and a low for the top of the controller, and then I flipped it over and did a high and a low for the bottom. So I figured this would be a good amount of coverage to pick up all of the texture, and I was really wrong. You can see the texture just looks really, really low res, and things like the buttons on the controllers and the sticker on the back, they just don't look great, and I was really nervous when I first saw this because I thought, if the texture looks this bad, you know, the mesh is going to look terrible. And I was in for a pretty big surprise. The mesh actually looks amazing. And when you flip over to the mesh view, this thing looks incredible. So this looks a lot closer to the quality of a scan I would expect from a scanner in this price range. And the mesh looks good. So the buttons are crisp. You can even see the controller sticks are visible and raised. And they look like they have a pretty consistent radius. So it looks good. I mean, as far as a controller goes, if I was a company developing aftermarket accessories for a you know PS4 controller, I think this scan would be enough to get me started. The downside is that texture just looks really, really bad, and Revopoint kind of hints at this on their frequently asked questions. They mention that most printer users are more concerned about the detail of the shape rather than the color, which is technically true, so if you're using an FDM 3D printer, the texture isn't really a big deal. That being said, if you're interested in texture, I'm not sure the scanner is going to be a good fit for your application. That being said, it is possible to use the mesh as a starting base and retexture it manually, but I'm not sure it's realistic to expect users to do that if they're expecting the scanning software to be an all-in-one solution. 
So what if you're only interested in making a 3D mesh and you're not concerned about the texture and you want the shortest workflow possible? The easiest way to accomplish this is by putting the model on the turntable, setting up the scanner, and then rotating it after one full revolution. To give you an idea of how easy this process is, what you're looking at here is a sped up version of me creating a scan by flipping the model around. There are no target markers or alignment tricks really being used here. All you're seeing is the model completing one full revolution and then being flipped on its side. It can take the software a few tries to align the model, but in my experience it was pretty reliable and this didn't cause the scan to fail. Here's the resulting mesh. It looks faithful to the original and it captured a lot of detail, but because it's a high resolution mesh, it looks kind of grainy. So one of the things you can do to simplify this is in Mesh Mixer, click Smooth Model. This smooths the model out, it gets rid of some of the graininess, makes it look a little bit more uniform. You do lose some of the sharper textures, but depending on your particular application, this might work better for you. Overall, for a process that takes under 10 minutes, I'm really impressed, and this is a great way to go from model to mesh quickly. The pop ships with a few sheets of calibration markers. These markers are little stickers that have a highly reflective white dot and a black circle surrounding it. The idea behind these markers is it makes it a little bit easier to scan things that are featureless or maybe difficult to define, and the markers are meant to help the scanner kind of identify where things are in space. I wanted to test this out on this impact driver, which has a lot of matte black surfaces, and unfortunately what I found was the marker setting on the Revapoint software didn't seem to work very well. When set to marker mode, it will capture where the markers are, but it loses track of them really easily, and you get these mistrack errors just constantly, and I had a lot of problems using the markers in marker mode. Interestingly enough, I got the best results from leaving the markers on the model and switching back to feature mode. The markers are identified as features, so there's no additional computational power required to identify them as markers, meaning the scan runs a lot smoother and the markers don't really make a whole lot of impact on the geometry of the model. So this worked really well and it kind of felt like a little bit of a hack. Again, you can see as the model gets a little bit larger, the software becomes a little bit laggy, so you have to move very slowly to capture the entire drill. Once we've finished the meshing, we can rotate around the model and see that we captured a lot of the geometry here. So all of the screw holes and the rubber overmolding, the clips on the batteries, all the detail is present and it actually looks pretty good. Once we pull it into Mesh Mixer, we can see this is a good looking mesh. So from here we could easily design a holster or an additional component that would mount to this drill using this mesh as our starting base. One of the big selling points of the POP is the ability to scan faces. This is something that was advertised pretty heavily in their Kickstarter, but I saw a couple of videos from early beta units and the scan quality wasn't that great, so I wasn't really sure what to expect here. The scanning process requires a lot of patience. The scanner has to move really slow and you also have to stand really still. So huge shout out to my girlfriend Erica for scanning my face like six times. <laughs> she really stuck with it and the result was great. You can see here from the mesh, this is a really solid and clean looking face scan. This is way above what I would expect from most handheld scanners. There's a lot of detail here and you can even see my eyelashes. I'm really impressed with the mesh. So that part of the scan looks great, but once we flip the texture on, this is a little less impressive. It just looks like a texture from an N64 game. I mean, it's not really great. So that being said, it's not terrible either. It's definitely usable. It just depends what you're using it for. I'm not sure I could recommend the scanner if you're planning on taking scans of things where you wanted a really high quality texture with very vivid color. Overall, I was impressed with the pop, but there's definitely a couple things to think about if you're interested in buying one of these scanners. The biggest takeaway for me was that the ability to make fast and high quality meshes with a turntable was by far the biggest strength of the pop. The software probably needs a little bit more control to be really useful, and the textures just aren't really up to par with what I would expect. If you're interested in learning more about the POP, I've included links to the Revapoint site in the description, as well as links to the 3D models I made in this video if you want to check them out and inspect them. I only really scratched the surface of what the scanner can do in this video, so be sure to leave me a comment if there's something you want to see me try and scan. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun scanning.